actually, here we are in the public meeting, in the general purpose room, and uh, it's Joe and I, and what's your name again? John. John from the Frontier Community Access Television Station, and we are the only people in the room. And the rest of us are on Zoom, which is which is fine. Um, I'm going to give an abbreviated hello. Um, uh, the purpose of this hearing is to allow for public review and comment on the um, proposed uh, pro our proposal to amend our existing zoning bylaws by adopting a new Article Seven floodplain district, which would replace the existing Article 77, Section 71, floodplain district, and Section 72, development regulations, with a new Article 7. <laughs> Section 7.1 through 7.15 is set forth in the document labeled flood, floodplain district. So here we are again over Zoom, and um, we're being recorded, and I'm also going to record this. Do I record it to this computer or do I record yes. it to the cloud? Oh. Right tell me. Oh. Tell me, Veronique. Do I record it to the cloud or to this computer? We did it to the cloud, too, not we? I'm asking. I do it to the cloud. Do it to the cloud. Do it to the cloud. Recording in progress. Out of space on your computer. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, I just want to double check with our town administrator. Okay, so we're being recorded uh, for television for community access television we're being recorded on the zoom on the zoom and i'm going to actually um when you have a question please put it in the chat um normally i would go through a whole thing about the order of questions uh, which will be first the planning board will ask questions members of the planning board who are here and on zoom then members of the select board Oops. one of whom is also here um, other representatives of town departments and boards, then uh, Conway residents, then members of the public. But we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Allison now. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Allison Gage. I'm a planner with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. I'm here with Kimberly Nook McPhee, who is the Land Use and Natural Resources Program Manager. And Joy Dugrell is also here. She's the director of the Flood Hazard Management Program at the DCR. Um, she's been a wonderful help to us while we've been working on this update. Um, so if we all have questions at the end, um, I'm sure she'll be able to help us out again. So we've been working on working with the planning board for the last several months to update your floodplain district bylaw. As Beth mentioned, this is the public hearing for that update. So the planning board pursued this update for a couple of important reasons, one being to protect property from flood damage and to further reduce the risk of pollution and environmental damage associated with flooding. Secondly, going through this update will ensure that the town um, complies with the requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program. The requirements of the NFIP have not changed, but the state's flood hazard management program found that many communities were not in compliance with NFIP regulations. They put together a model bylaw communities can use to ensure they are meeting, meeting the minimum requirements. Conway's planning board and the FERCOG use this model to make sure that all requirements are met. Having this updated bylaw in place will allow the town to continue participating in the federal flood insurance program. A total of seven properties in Conway are covered under the NFIP program for a total coverage amount of about $2 million. Adopting the, the updated floodplain district will ensure your neighbors will be able to use flood insurance in the event of future flooding damage. It's also important to have a floodplain district bylaw when considering the impacts of climate change. We've already started to experience more frequent and intense events, which is a pattern that will likely continue. Having a clear and thorough bylaw will help to eliminate new hazards to flooding, costs associated with cleanup, and help to avoid water quality contamination. One question that has come up a lot for towns going through this update is if the town's current flood floodplain district will change. The quick answer is no, your floodplain is remaining the same with this bylaw update. As you would expect, the floodplain district is closely related to the larger waterways in and around Conway, such as the Deerfield River, the South River, Chapel Brook, and Pumpkin Hollow Brook. 
You may have heard that FEMA is working on an update to the um, floodplain maps, but they're just working on digitizing the maps. They're not actually going to change the floodplain district. So this slide shows how the floodplain district is explained in the bylaw update. So it clarifies that the floodplain district is the area noted on FEMA's maps and that indicate the 1% chance regulatory floodplain that was delineated in 1980. These maps are held on file with the town clerk and the floodplain administrator, which is a new designation that I will explain. Um, so now I'll go through the main changes to your floodplain district bylaw. This won't be a comprehensive overview of every change, but I'm just going to pull out the uh, main differences. So the first section worth noting is the purpose section. The NFIP program requires a purpose section citing health, safety, and welfare reasons for adoption. The underlying purpose of the floodplain um, management regulations is to minimize the harmful impacts of flooding upon the community, so they want them to be clearly stated here. These stated purposes will be ever more critical due to climate change and the possibility of increased flooding or flood damages. Conway must designate one person to act as the community's floodplain administrator. This is so that FEMA uh, can use this information in their local context database and so that this person can act on behalf of the community when implementing certain tasks under the National Flood Insurance Program. Their responsibilities are listed out in the updated bylaw and include oversight of the permit process, maintaining records of floodplain development, and keeping FEMA maps on file. Part of the updated model bylaw is also to make it clear that permits are required for all development in the floodplain district. The NFIP permitting requirement is not meant to be prescriptive, but it just requires that documentation of some kind of permit or review process is mandatory for all floodplain development. Also, the NFIP program notes that documenting all development in the floodplain benefits communities because when or if a violation is discovered, the community can demonstrate that they did not approve the, devel the development as constructed. They really want you to have a clear paper trail of floodplain development and to have it all clearly stated in your bylaw. This is another requirement of the NFIP program. All recreational vehicles need to be elevated and anchored or on site for less than 180 days or be highway ready, which basically means that the vehicle could be moved off site immediately if there was a possibility of the area flooding. This includes vehicles that are already located within the floodplain. And on the next couple of slides, I just wanted to clarify what the process would look like for applicants who are seeking to develop an area located within Conway's floodplain. So the applicant would need to obtain all necessary permits, including a permit from the building inspector who could refer the applicant to other needed permits at the state level. Of course, the applicant would want to check if they are in the floodplain before applying for a permit, which can be done by checking checking the maps on file with the town clerk or the floodplain administrator. Once necessary approvals are received, the applicant can request final approval from the floodplain, from the floodplain administrator. So those are all the updates in a nutshell, but again, um, now we can open it up for questions and comments. I have one, one question. The, normally the building inspector will not deal with a trailer, in other words, a, um, a trailer with wheels, they do not consider that to be a building, if I'm stating it correctly. How does that work in with this bylaw? How do, how do we control the trailers with wheels, rather than the ones that are put on a foundation and the building inspector gets involved? Well, are people living in the trailers, is well, what you're saying? Well, every time, you know, we've had this thing about <coughs> trailers in Conway and tiny homes uh -huh. and generally the building inspector says that if it's at wheels it's not the responsibility of the, of the building commissioner. I think in that case it would still have to go through the floodplain administrator um, rather than the building inspector. So does that mean that every trailer has to be somehow registered in town and, and not in other words, I'm a little confused at how we, how we uh, <coughs> enforce the requirement. I think you're saying if it's road ready, um, it's, it's okay to be there with wheels on it. But if it's not road ready, then 
it needs the building inspector to look at it, I think, and check the foundation or whatever, the elevation requirements. So, Joe, when you say a, a trailer on wheels, are you talking about an RV trailer or like a mobile home or a, um, a tiny home on wheels or all of them? I, it's my understanding that if it has wheels, the building commissioner does not deal with it. Huh. Um, it would be a trailer Joy, or, a, or, yeah. or, you know, or a that mobile I, home. I can help with that. Okay, thank you. So, uh, hi, so my name's Joy Dubrault um, with the state. So, uh, you are correct. Uh, an RV does not fall under the purview of the building inspector at all. It's not covered under the building code. Uh, and so, it would not be the building inspector's job to speak with those people unless the building inspector was um, your floodplain administrator. In that case, it's, it's his, his or her job to, uh, to help those folks work out what the issues are. So let's say you have an RV park along the river and some of those RVs, as defined in your bylaw, there is a definition for RV. Um, if they've been there for a long, long time, the people have maybe um, connected them up to you know, a, a carport or they've built a deck on them or they've got porta potties in the back of the backyard or you know, whatever. Um, if those truly are uh, the definition of an RV, then the community, um, that is the town of Conway and whomever Conway has selected as the floodplain administrator, would need to work with those folks on a compliancy plan to make those RVs compliant again, uh, because for 50 years this has been a rule, um, but uh, FEMA in Region 1 has not really paid a lot of attention to it until a few years ago. Um, and so, you know, there's a number of ways to handle that. Um, there can be um, compliancy plans written uh, with the, the homeowner or the, the RV owner um, to, you know, get down to the root of what the issue is. But essentially, the reason for this bylaw piece is that an RV um, is, you know, in the case of a flood, uh, needs to be able to be removed immediately from the property before the flooding happens. You know, so if an RV has wheels and it's road ready and it's got a current license on it, uh, you know, a plate, a registration plate, and it's ready to go, then there's no problem at all. It's for those RVs that are not ready to go, um, that's where the issue lies. And RVs are not manufactured homes. That's an entirely different thing, as you noted. Uh, those do fall under the building code. So those are entirely different than RVs. Uh, did that help? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Thanks, Joy. Uh, do any other members of the planning board who are on the Zoom have a question for uh, Allison or Joy at, at this moment about, about this? I wanted to clarify something about where the floodplains lie. Um, I think we've made references to um, Pumpkin Hollow, the Deerfield River, the South River, Chapel Falls. But does it also include, um, is it Poland, Poland Brook? I don't think it's a river. Um, I would have to double check a better map. This is just one I put together um, quickly, but I don't think it does. Um, sorry, which which stream again? Poland. 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 I don't think so. Neither do I. No. I asked because I was mucking around with the firm maps as best I could the other day, and it seemed to show the Poland Poland Brook as a floodplain. But um, as I said, I was wandering around, and I may have been looking at the wrong thing. Which is why I asked. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check that when I'm in the um, office tomorrow. Great, thank you. Um, is there any, um, so for, of the planning board, there's just, I believe, three of us here. George, myself, and Bill, and Joe, who's an associate member. So I don't think there's... Bill Mobius is here, yes. Yeah, uh-huh. Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm here. 
Oh, Jen's here. Yay. Do you have any questions, Jen? I think we're all here. Except Susan. Is Susan around? I don't see her. <laughs> well, while you're thinking of your second question, I'll go with mine. And this might be more for Kimberly. <coughs> Kimberly, you and I met with a group of people that were, I thought, working on the next generation of flood maps. Do you remember? Yes. Is that, um, is that project still alive? Is, are we looking? My question is, are we going to have new flood maps in, let's say, a decade, in five or ten years? And will then the laws just transfer to the new floodplain maps? So, um, I, I'll, I'll give you my, I'll share my understanding and then, Joy, if, if you have some additional information to add, that would be great. So, the FEMA is working on a project to create digital files of the Franklin County maps, which right now we just have the paper maps, like um, Allison showed a picture of one in the slideshow. As part of that work to digitize the floodplain, they did pick a couple of spots across the county where they were going to do some additional uh, hydraulic investigations or modeling, but primarily what they're going to be looking at as they digitize the paper maps is doing minor corrections. Um, so, for example, if the floodplain from 1980 looks like it's on top of a hill or in some weird area where it doesn't belong because we have so much better topographic mapping data now, they might like scooch it down a bit. But we're not getting floodplain maps that are reflective of like the climate change and these more frequent you know storm events that we're giving or getting the data that they're going to be based on is essentially the same data and the hydraulic studies and whatnot that were done back in the 1980s and joy um did i explain that correctly or do you have anything yes, to add? Yes, you, 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 um, you explained it very well. Um, so the new maps will have a photo ortho base, uh, just like everyone else's maps. Uh, it will be a, a, something like uh, a 2021 or 2022 base. So it will be an aerial map. You'll be able to look down, you'll be able to look at the flood, at the um, floodplain map in the new version and see the streets that exist now and see the buildings that exist now and you'll be able to see the overlay of the floodplain. As Kimberly said, not much will be changing this time around uh, because they're just using what's called base level engineering and that's basically like taking your floodplain maps and snapping them to the new topography. Um, so as she pointed out, if your old maps show a stream running uphill, we know that's a mistake and they will fix that. Uh, so, uh, as far as the time frame for it, uh, Conway is in two watersheds, two FEMA watersheds. They use the Huck 8 size watershed, uh, primarily the Deerfield watershed, but you have a little bit of Conway in the Middle Connecticut watershed that FEMA is looking at. Both of those are um, expected, let me see, Deerfield, Middle so, uh, what their projected timeline is, sometime later this year, and no promises from FEMA, but sometime later this year, they expect to come up with the, what they call the work maps. And you will be able to go to a public meeting, you will be able to look at those work maps, you'll be able to write on them and draw things on them and say, no, 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 this is all wrong, or yes, finally you've noticed that we have a culvert here, whatever. Um, and then those work maps then get modified into um, preliminary maps ready for public viewing. The work maps are not for public viewing, just for your viewing uh, as town members, but not for like the greater public uh, at large. And then they make the better maps, the more refined maps out of those, and then they go for public viewing and there's an appeals period. 
And after the appeals period is over, if there's no contesting of the maps and there's no appeals and so forth, then the maps go into what's called preliminary stage and you'll get a letter of final determination issued and that letter will tell you on such and such a date, these will now be your effective maps. And that's projected right now for both of those watersheds to be at the earliest, uh, it looks like the spring of 2024. So somewhere in the spring of 2024, um, you will need to, you know, accept the maps uh, officially by changing the dates in your bylaw to reflect the new map dates. And also you won't have flood hazard and flood boundary maps anymore. So you'll just have firms at that point. So you'll be able to take out the flood hazard and boundary, flood boundary maps um, that you currently have. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. We'll pencil it in. Pencil it in. That that brings me actually to a question for I'm not sure who, but um, we submitted the draft. Uh, the planning board submitted the draft to the town to be printed in the warrant. The draft of the new. And then Joy uh, noticed that there were some things that needed to be changed in it, and that's specifically the reference to those other maps uh, that you were just talking about the flood flood boundary. hazard and flood boundary mm -hmm. yeah so we have to add that language in um as part of the process at town meeting but i just want to mention that as a no just be the motion we'll as a thing we'll have to do with the motion yeah um, I'm sorry, the official name is Flood Boundary and Floodway Map. They, there were several different names for maps back then, and I don't yeah. keep them straight. So you have two Flood Boundary and Floodway Maps that you have to, um, right now, you have to refer to those also. But yes. with the new maps, you won't have those. So, so that'll just be something we do um, when we make a motion. We'll, we'll add that in. Yes. Um, so... Bill, well, and I had another question about, well, I think we can discuss the whole subdivision thing at, a, at the next planning board meeting. Never mind, I've removed that question. Um, uh, Phil, is our select board representative, or are you just here as a, as a, as a person? <laughs> well, you're both. Uh, I don't know. I'm Do you here. Any questions? Do you have questions? Yeah. <laughs> As a representative of the planning board, of the select board, do you have any questions? Yes, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I submitted it in writing in the chat section as instructed. Oh, I'm at a distance from the um, thing. Okay. Oh, this is an excellent question. Um, Why? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you ask it because you. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh dear, I don't remember what it was. Okay, um, this. How will the well, yeah, yeah. How, how, how is how is this um, bylaw going to affect any uh, 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 berm removal slash uh, um, river natural river path restoration project that the town may or may not choose to undertake in the near future? So yeah, I, I'll start, and then um, Joy can chime in. So. It is a, it's a good question. I mean, I think one way to think about it is that like any other project that would happen in the floodplain, there would be a permitting and a review process. So this, um, the argument here for the berm removal and the river restoration is that we are opening up the floodplain that the river did not have access to before. So we're taking down like an impediment, we're taking down this barrier. So there are positive attributes of the project. There might, um, and part of the work would involve the engineer doing a hydraulic and hydrologic analysis to understand how this is going to affect the river flows and what happens downstream. Uh, but I think if the concern is, will this, will these bylaw changes prevent or somehow, um, you know, interrupt this 
proposed project, I would say the answer would no, it would be no. Maybe there would be like a little bit more um, scrutiny given to it, but that's never a bad thing. I believe. Yeah. That, uh, oh, maybe Joy. I think there's an actual procedure now on, the, on the, with the existing flood maps for modifying them. Yes, yeah, so uh, what Kimberly said is absolutely correct. Um, the bylaw will not affect your projects. Your projects may affect the maps, and in that turn, then, the bylaw is based on the maps. So uh, the bylaw will not affect your projects. Your projects may affect the maps, at which the bylaw is based on. Um, that's about all I can say about that. <laughs> oh, as far as you mentioned, Joe, the process for changing the maps, that's a regular FEMA process. And if you, uh, let's say you get a federal or state grant to do some of this river restoration, um, part of the grant, especially if it's a federal grant, uh, might require that analysis that Kimberly referred to, the uh, hydrologic and hydraulic analysis. It might require that to be um, submitted to FEMA so that they can agree on the map change and then they will then revise the maps based on that. So it's a pretty common process. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other uh, questions out there? I still have a, a question if uh, I can jump ahead of someone else. Yes, you can. I see. Um, so. And Joe may have, Joe may understand this now, but I'm still confused. When Joy was talking about maps that might be available in the spring of 2024 at the earliest, are you talking about the digitized versions of the 1980 maps, or are you talking about, quote, new maps? The, the former, the base level engineering maps that are based on. Uh, the, the 1980 data. Uh, again, there might be minor changes. Uh, I, uh, like Kimberly mentioned, um, they did have a little bit of money for a little bit of extra study uh, of the uh, floodplain, uh, pro probably along the Deerfield, um, but I'm not sure if any of that would affect Conway or not. Okay. And yeah. so when Joe keeps asking about mm -hmm. new maps, um, you're not even talking, you're not even speculating when those might come down the, the pipeline. Um, that's like five or ten years or more. You mean maps where there's more money spent on studying things to find out if this really is the floodplain, that kind yeah. of map? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, or maps that, that take into account more frequent and, and fierce uh, yeah. storms and so forth. So that's kind of two questions. Uh, maps that don't take future conditions into consideration uh, I don't know if FEMA's plan beyond these maps. They do have like a rolling 10-year plan, but that doesn't mean obviously your maps are pretty old and they haven't touched them for a long time. So there's no guarantee on that. It's all a question of money. Uh, anytime the town wants to raise a bunch of money to change their maps, they're welcome to do that. But, you know, the federal government only doles up just so much every year. And FEMA Region 1 kind of has a strategy for using that money as it goes down the priority list. So you could make a lot of noise to the FEMA Region 1 Risk Analysis Branch people and tell them you want, you know, what you want, uh, and they can tell you when they think you might get that. With regard to future conditions, Congress has asked FEMA to look into mapping for future conditions. Uh, FEMA, and this is not official, I'm not a FEMA person, I'm from the state, but from my observations over the last uh, decade or so, um, FEMA has kind of put that on the back burner. And the reason is because originally these were flood insurance rate maps. And you can't rate someone's insurance based on something that's supposed to happen in the future. So they were never going to put future conditions on a flood insurance rate map. Now the rating system has entirely changed. And so that has freed FEMA up a little bit to be able to consider future conditions. For example, uh, they did some coastal erosion maps uh, for Cape Cod, Nantucket, that area, um, that are based on future conditions. So the, the hope is that eventually, uh, when they get enough money, they will do some of that kind of mapping. But I certainly wouldn't hold my breath, you know. And, <laughs> well, and I think, um, George, one thing that Conway is... Um, lucky to have, if you will, are the 
river corridor maps that were produced as a result of the um, fluvial geomorphic study that was done, and also the work that Conway has been doing with the MVP grant program uh, to do the hydraulic and hydrologic modeling of um, Conway Center. So the grant application that just went in recently is going to expand upon that and include Pumpkin Hollow Brook. Modeling was done down um, at the project area where the Oxbow Reconnection project was. And when you look at the model runs that the engineering consultant did with the last MVP grant, you can get an idea of what these future um, flood conditions might be. Mm -hmm. So um, we do have information out there that the town can use in planning purposes. And like Joyce said, these flood insurance rate maps are, are important for people to uh, that need to have flood insurance. So we can think about these other tools that, that we have in our toolbox and not really rely solely upon um, these old maps because really the purpose of them wasn't for what we're trying to do now, right? Thanks, Kimberly. Um, is there, oh, Phil has another comment or question. Um, a, a question, just the, about the slide and about the earlier presentation about, and, and what you, what Kimberly was just talking about too. So it, is it, it, if this bylaw is not revised and approved at, at town meeting, is it accurate that, to say that those eight people will not be able to get flood insurance? So I can answer that. Um, so if if you don't approve this bylaw this year at this town meeting, uh, no, it is not true that those people will not be able to get their flood insurance. However, because um, FEMA's priorities right now for these bylaws are uh, towns that are getting new maps right away uh, and uh, towns that have had a visit from the state or FEMA, uh, they're now calling, calling those an audit visit. We used to call them a monitoring visit. Um, and I don't believe Conway is in either of those categories. So no, they won't throw you out. However, they are going to reach a point where um, they are going to ask us, Eric and I, who's left, who hasn't done it, and then we're going to have to get you to do it at that point. So. I mean, I, I would hate for you to not pass it because it's a good bylaw, it's, it's helpful to the community, and it's helpful for any proposed development in the floodplain. Um, but I don't believe you'll be thrown out at this time if you don't pass it. That's the honest answer, even though I really wanted to tell you, oh, you have to pass it. <laughs> well, uh, see, I, I really wanted to clarify that because I thought from the earlier presentation um, that, that that was an implication made that that, that and I didn't want to be, you know, getting out front at town meeting saying, if we don't do this, the eight people are going to, and then somebody in the audience would have, you know, you know, uh, regulation 143.6 that says, you know, no, just like, just what Joy just said. And so, you know, I'm glad that now, now we won't be making that assumption, that, that, that statement. But please, please pass the bylaw if you can, because it just makes everybody's job so much easier. And it's very good for your floodplain development to be following those uh, minimum standards. In actuality, let me say, if you don't pass the bylaw like it is, you are considered by FEMA to be non-compliant. And that's where they start when they start with the conversation about throwing people out of the program. Uh, but they're a little softer for towns that uh, are not, if you were getting a new map this spring, you would absolutely have to do it or you would lose, you would be kicked out of the program. So. Um, can I ask? Uh, Michelle. Yeah. Yes, Michelle. Um, I'm Michelle Turry. I'm on the Open Space um, Committee, Friends of South River, and I live on the river. <laughs> So um, I'm curious about the um, process for appealing the existing maps. And you guys have answered so many of my questions. Thank you. Um, but um, what exactly is it that I want to ask? Um, 
So how do, you know, one of the things that's, I think, difficult for residents is seeing the map, and I know it's available in the town offices and stuff. Is it online anywhere, the existing one, and how do we keep it up to date for whatever changes do happen so that we, you know, the people who need to see it can see it? Do you want me to answer that, Kimberly? It's, yeah. So yes, if you Google FEMA Map Service Center, um, there are, it will take you to the FEMA Map website. And there's a couple of ways. You could type in an address. There's a field there for search by address. You could type in an address, and it will bring you to that map. Um, also, you can put in search all, pro pro all um, products, and you can put in Massachusetts and Franklin County and then Town of Conway, and it will take you to all the maps at once, uh, which I think you have like seven or eight panels, um, so it's not a big, long list. Um, as far as people seeing the maps, uh, what was the second part of your question? Um, oh, just how do they stay up to date? Like, so oh. say that, say um, the work we're doing with the river quarter or the, the um, you know, the flow studies um, is, is ready to share with FEMA and then they, the town appeals and the map changes and it's like, um, I imagine, FEMA's going to be slow to update anything public because it takes work and can that, I'm, I don't know, I'm just yeah. asking like how do, how do um, the citizens stay aware of changes? Right, changes to the FEMA maps. Okay, so you have very, very old, as you know, paper maps. Uh, FEMA is not updating the old paper maps um, actively. Um, what happens is if you, let's say that you had an H&H &H study on some branch of the river, like behind your house, and you proved that the FEMA map was wrong somehow, and FEMA agreed with you, then they would issue you a letter of map revision or a letter of map amendment that you would have, but they don't change the old paper maps. That's just, okay. you know, they kind of figure it's water under the bridge. However, once your maps are digitized, if you then make a change to the map, a revision or an amendment, well, not an amendment, but a map revision, um, within a couple of weeks, once they approve it, oh, they change okay. it online within a couple That's of weeks. Excellent. That's yeah. good to you know. That's good yeah. to know. That doesn't always happen. You know? not, not with the old paper ones. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, well, no. I mean, even with other agencies um, yeah. updating content. So thank you. That answers my question. Thank you both. That was interesting for me as well. Um, anybody else on the Zoom who's interested in asking a question? I see Veronique, I think, who... Do you have a question? Yes. Yes, thanks. Um, I was just wondering if, if it would be possible to send the links to me, Joy, for the information you just mentioned, so that I can put that up on the website so that residents can look it up. Thank I'll you. do it right now. I'll put it in the chat. Is that okay? Uh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, Beth, this yeah. is Kimberly. I, um, you mentioned like saving the subdivision discussion for uh, maybe another meeting. I think that's what I heard, and I, yeah. I wonder if since we have Joy with us, that we might just talk a little bit about that because we did mention to Joy that Conway does not have subdivision regulations, yeah. but it sounds like the language that Joy provided to us that we shared with the planning board is still a requirement. And so I thought it might be a nice opportunity to maybe noodle on this or chat a little bit about it so that the planning board feels yeah. uh, more comfortable with why it has to be done even though the town does not have subdivision regulations. I think that would be good. Good, And then we have a few people from the public and the select board here to listen to us noodle on it, so maybe that would be, this would be a good time. Uh, we did yeah. uh, bring this up with Joy and she, um, just to fill people in on this, this was some language that when we created the draft, we took it out because we said, we don't have subdivision regulations in town. 
And then Joy said, we have to put, we, we, she suggested very strongly that we put it back in, which again would be a thing we would have to put back in on the, as part of the motion um, when we're introducing the article at town meeting. So um, the language that we removed says, all subdivision proposals and development proposals in the floodplain overlay district shall be reviewed to assure that a, such proposals minimize flood damage. B, public utilities and facilities are located and constructed so as to minimize flood damage. C, adequate drainage is provided. And that's from 7.11 subdivision proposals to be added back in. And then 7.12, base flood elevation data for subdivision proposals. When proposing subdivisions or other developments greater than 50 lots or five acres, whichever is less, the proponent must provide technical data to determine base flood elevations for each developable parcel shown on the design plans. So that's what's being suggested that we add back in to this um, proposed uh, new bylaw. Uh, so what do people, I'm just actually wondering, uh, people who are on this meeting who are Conley residents, do you think the fact that we don't have subdivision regulations, so we never accepted the subdivision <coughs> regulations from the state, how will that go? I'm just concerned that to say this on the floor of town meeting will uh, make, uh, We'll go down a road that will take up a lot of time that we're not so sure we want to go down. That's my concern. The, the most common problem we have now is people assume we have subdivision, which is not correct. Mm -hmm. And this just leads us further down that road. So I, you know, I would say, as a minimum, we consider some kind of an aspirin. That the, at this time, Conway does not allow subdivisions or some, something to just bring out the fact that, yeah, we're putting it in, but it may not be applicable at this point in time. Put it in with a caveat, you mean, like? Joy. Okay, what do you think, Joy? <laughs> so you have a choice. Um, and by the way, um, the fact that you don't have subdivisions um, doesn't mean that two years from now, a developer buys up, you know, 100 acres in your gorgeous town somewhere and makes a proposal to put a subdivision in and half of it's in the floodplain. So just the fact that you don't have them is really uh, of no, uh, is a moot point. Um, so you have two, two choices. You can either put them in your local code, your enforceable code, somewhere in your code. It doesn't have to be in subdivision regulations. Uh, it makes sense to put them in the floodplain regulations. Um, or if you don't want to put them in, then instead you can put in to your local code a statement that says the town of Conway prohibits all subdivisions in the floodplain. If you have that in your local code, then you don't need the other two pieces. But FEMA needs to see that you're either not going to let anybody put a subdivision in your floodplains or that you're going to manage it appropriately. And that's what those two articles are for. Okay, that's useful. Phil, our select board person. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought that the, the, all of the, the, those alternatives that Joy just gave us, all of them are unpalatable at town meeting for one to, to one extent or another. Just to the just in, in that they make it harder to pass this. That it, it, um, it, as long as as long as you're making reference to a subdivision bylaw that doesn't exist, I think Joe's suggestion of an asterisk or or just a comma if any. Every time the, the the word subdivision by law is mentioned, um, it, would would those be okay, Joy? So, what would the asterisk lead to? What would the statement for the asterisk be? That Conway does not, in fact, currently have a subdivision by law, or um, yeah, or, you know, that that was Joe's suggestion. My my suggestion, an alternative, would be just that every time the word sub subdivision by law is mentioned that there would be just a, you know, a comma or a parenthetical that says, if any. Um, well, so the, the t actual text doesn't say subdivision bylaw. It just says, as um, as uh, Beth read, proposals. Uh, uh, if, so there's two pieces. One piece is, if you're going to allow uh, a subdivision in the floodplain, it has to be, you know, uh, 
adequate drainage, things have to be built there that are flood resistant, etc. That just says if you let a subdivision go in your floodplain, then it needs to be like this. The second one says that if you let a subdivision go in your floodplain, the developer, the proposer of that subdivision, has got to provide base flood elevations for any parcel in that subdivision that has floodplain on it. In other words, you have unnumbered A zones in your community that don't have a base flood elevation. So if someone wants to put a subdivision in the floodplain, they've got to pay for the hydrology study to tell you what the base flood is so that your building inspector can make sure the building is built according to the, build, the state building code. Um, so it, the fact that you don't have any now really, like I said, doesn't matter to anybody except obviously to you all. Uh, but those subdivision pieces of the floodplain bylaw are for the future. If someone makes a proposal for a subdivision in your floodplain, then those two pieces of code have to be in your code. So again, you don't have to let people put uh, subdivisions in your floodplain, but FEMA wants you to state that as a prohibition if you don't want to put these pieces in. You know, they want to see one or the other. But Joy, I, I guess I want to clarify something because you said twice now, you've made reference to Conway not having any subdivisions. It goes beyond that. The town does not have provision for approving subdivisions. You, you, we've never adopted the state enabling legislation. Um, okay. It's not just a matter of no one has happened to have built one yet. It's that there is no provision in our zoning for subdivisions. Okay, so does it say anywhere in your written code, anywhere, that you cannot have a subdivision in Conway? When we adopted the uh, planning act, we prohibited subdivisions, I believe, in that section. Okay, and so that's in somewhere in your local code? It would, it would have been, in, I think, in the motion it was made on town meeting floor. So, so. Perfect. Perfect. So you don't have to put those two pieces in, then, if you can cite where in your local code it says that you cannot have subdivisions. That, that satisfies FEMA right there. Okay. We have to look, we'll have to look that up. But. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. I think Sandy's had her hand up for a while. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to check and make sure you guys can hear me. Um, okay. Um, I, many of you may know, I live on uh, Main Street right next to the South River and uh, I am currently insured in the federal um, insurance program. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> my question is really um, probably is very, well, not basic, but a uh, practical question because I think almost everything I do is going to be affected by this. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned because I'm not sure what falls under that in terms of the wording like construction. I put up a chicken coop once and had to get a building permit for that because the planning board told me I had to do that. So I'm a little worried about um, what I might whether everything I do is going to have to go to this floodplain administrator and what they then tell me I need to do. I mean, and what, what I'm not, I guess what I'm not really sure I'm clear on is if that there's permission given, but there's also permission not given to do things. That's what I'm not clear on. I have no plans to do anything, but it, I think that because I live on Main Street, everything I do is very visible, and people are always interested in what I'm doing, it seems. So um, I just want to know what, you know, if I come across a project I want to do, what am I supposed to do? Go to the flood plan administrator, they give me a permit, and then they say yes or no? Is that how it works? Can I answer that one? Yes, yeah. please. Okay. Thank you. That's an excellent, excellent question. Um, so just so you know, 95% uh, of all of the NFIP minimum requirements um, for Massachusetts are found in the Massachusetts State Building Code. And then um, a little piece of it is also found in the Wetlands Protection Act, Chapter or 310 CMR, uh, Section 10.57, 4A, which has to do with compensatory storage. So 
that right there, uh, all of those are about 97% of the minimum requirements. What's in this floodplain bylaw are just the rest, the rest of the pieces that didn't get into the building code, didn't get into the Wetlands Protection Act. So essentially, um, not much will change for you, Sandy, because uh, the building inspector has to enforce the building code and the flood resistant standards for construction, most of them are found in the building code. Um, the Conservation Commission has to enforce the Wetlands Protection Act, so if you try to build something else too close to the South River, I think you said you were on the South River, they would make you, um, you know, provide compensatory storage, et cetera, et cetera. So um, these pieces that are in this bylaw, primarily administrative pieces, just to make sure uh, that everybody gets the picture. Um, I can't, the, the, the one thing I can think of, the term development um, is defined in the bylaw, um, and development is very broad, and under the NFIP it means pretty much anything you're going to do in the floodplain needs to have a permit, or at least needs to have somebody look at it. And the reason for that is, if you're going to do something that will change the base flood elevation, Probably you aren't going to do anything that will change the base flood elevation, so you won't cause any extra flooding on people downstream or people upstream. You won't be backing up the water. Um, those are the, that's really, um, so under the term for development, you know, it's everything from a flagpole to um, a chicken coop or a house, you know, uh, or dredging or mining, all of those things, they do need to be reviewed by the community you know, by the community who is enforcing the minimum standards of the NFIP. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But I mean, I have things like a foundation that needs repair, but from the inside or siding on the house that needs to be repaired. You know, when you talk about construction, that's construction to me, but I don't know that that really has anything to do with the floodplain. I'm just concerned that I know what I need to do and then what the town has the ability to tell me I need to do in return. That's all. Yeah, and those things you mentioned are all covered under the building code. So whether you have a floodplain bylaw or not, you would still have to follow the building code. And in the building code are flood resistance standards for construction so the building inspector would need you to follow those whether you have a bylaw or not so what you're saying is you can of course do the work you just have to make sure as with any as with any work that people do on their homes they are supposed to pull a permit for a number of these things <coughs> right. yeah. That's, yeah that's interesting because I don't think that's what I see happening but that's uh, another matter. I mean, yeah. you know, I'm talking about very minor things, but I, I look around and I think it's, a lot of it has to do with visibility being right on the main street, right next to the river. But, uh, you know, I'm good with that. I just I just want to know what I'm supposed to do, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, Sandy, this is George. I've been yeah. tasked with taking notes tonight. Yes. And I think I know where you live, but I don't think I know your last name. It's Hay, H-A-Y, 52 okay. Main Street. Oh, uh, you sent us a message earlier because you have or had COVID, is that right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, it was it was really rather minor, but I think the medication bothered me a lot more than the disease, so. Uh, uh, well, but that's passed. So. Good. Well, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. So anyone, okay. uh, just reminding everyone that they should have signed in if they're here um, at this meeting on Zoom, please do sign in in the chat with your name, your affiliation, or your and your address, if applicable. Um, Michelle, do you still have a question? Oh, I was just going to say to Sandy to help her feel a little better. I needed to do work on my house, and you can repair something like a quarter of the siding of the building at a time without getting a permit. <laughs> so just look up the, you can look up the, the um, permit regulations at the county, and then yeah. you'll, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Michelle also has a very visible house on the river. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't, anyone, any other questions? Any other questions? <coughs> um, does it look like it? Cool. I think we're ready to close this public hearing. I think what will happen is the planning board will just continue <coughs> discussing how to, um, 
present best how to present this at town meeting and we'll probably be in touch with Allison and Kimberly about it. I really thank both of you for your work on this and Joy for coming tonight. You've been incredibly Ooh. helpful um, and um, we're really uh, grateful that we had the help that we had from, from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Couldn't have done it without you. And um, our, our article for this is the last at town meeting on June 4th, Saturday, June 4th. <laughs> we're the last item on the agenda. <coughs> That'll be nice. <coughs> anyway, um, if there's any other questions, I will go closer to the screen here to see. No, I think we're I think we're all right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna um. Somebody, need a motion, somebody from sure. my team needs to make a motion to close this hearing. And I, I move that we close the hearing. Okay, and uh, who's gonna second that? George, you're gonna second that. Jen is second. I'll second that. I'll second. Okay, all in favor of that. That would be me, Beth. I don't vote on this. <coughs> Joe doesn't vote on this. <coughs> um, Excuse me. I, uh, George, yes. Jen, yes. Bill, yes. Okay, we're all <coughs> officially closed. And uh, <coughs> thanks, everyone, for coming. <coughs> Thank, yes, Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Bye, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.